cost in my own life, which seems so silly now because I feel so illuminated, but it took a lot of time and a lot of money to go and do and meet with all these people because I had to travel often and I talked to people online and in person. And so I created a community Together We Seek to bring together some of my favorite light workers. And I interview all different types of practitioners because I'm really just looking to see what's out there. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I talked to Natalie and she's an astro cartography where she aligns your birth chart to the map of the world. And it kind of highlights the areas in the planet that really align to your soul. So I have all different conversations, but the whole goal is to just share the different tools, techniques, and practices out there so that anybody can say, you know, what is this? What is that? Let me check it out. And um, it's just been so rewarding because I feel like we're shifting from the fifth sun to the sixth sun. So we're moving much more into a feminine energy and about healing the planet. And many of us are going to need new levels of insight, new relationships, and new awareness of not only who we are, but how to show up on the planet. Namaste, sweet souls. My name is Shilpa, and you're listening to the Omni Mindfulness Podcast. I am a mindset and meditation coach for professional women and mompreneurs. The purpose of this show is to offer stories and content that allows you to increase your awareness of your authentic self and be inspired by connecting to the personal and professional stories of other souls. Souls who are walking the walk and living everyday human experiences with inspired intentions. These are the stories that will expand your consciousness and spark within you to ask, what if... Each season, I offer content to help you create a holistic lifestyle that embodies spirituality, mindfulness, mindset, and energy awareness. Through my conversations with experts in their niche area and solo casts from yours truly, my intention is to help you holistically revitalize, reset, and relax your body, mind, and spirit. I'm your host and founder of Omni Mindfulness. So ask yourself, what if just one story could be the catalyst to shift the trajectory of my life? What if I become instrumental in serving other souls to realize their true self? And what if my soul's higher purpose is in the realization of omni-mindfulness joy? It's never too late to rewrite your story. And now, today's episode. Welcome back, sweet souls. This is your host, Shilpa. I wanted to share some exciting news about a little challenge I'm running as I'm trying to get more people to discover this podcast and the conversations that inspire those who value personal growth. And the best way to do that is to leave reviews. You can leave a review on Spotify, Google Podcast, or Apple Podcast. So my request to you is to leave a review if you feel that you've received any value at all from these episodes of Omni Mindfulness. It would mean so much to me if you could write a little review regarding any episode that resonated with you. Please take a screenshot of that review and email it to me at omnimindfulness at gmail.com. In return, I will offer you my one-page guide to spark your meditation practice through Sankalpa. Sankalpa is a Sanskrit word for intention setting. Along with this, you'll receive a link to my guided meditation that will guide you through an intention setting meditation, positive affirmations, which you can practice daily. I guarantee that this gift will help you start a daily intention setting practice with a spark. It is my gift for you for being a listener, being a supporter, and of course, to enable you to manifest the best meditation practice. And we are now in my fifth podcast season, exploring the topic of spirituality. Each month, my guest and I delve deeper. In January, we explore spiritual entrepreneurship. In February, spiritual leadership and wisdom. And wrapping up with spiritual awareness in March. Stay tuned. 
And up next, JJ D. Geronimo. JJ is a two time award winning author who helps women raise their frequencies and empower their future impact through tried and tested strategies, mindfulness, and energetic practices. Formerly a leading woman in the tech industry, she now passionately strives to help women gain more seats at more tables by sharing the key findings that have helped her and countless others illuminate a path forward. Featured in publications such as Forbes, The Wall Street Journal, and Thrive Global, JJ is regularly invited as a speaker for events and conferences. Her work includes three books, two podcasts, two global online communities, and in-person experiences. In today's episode, JJ and I explored the question, is it okay for asking for alone time? After five years of researching, attending, and practicing, JJ is excited to share the most important key findings from her journey. In her new book, Seeking 74 Key Findings to Raise Your Energy, Sidestep Self-Doubt, and Align with Your Life's Work, JJ unpacks the strategies that helped her infuse more meaning and purpose into her work and life. JJ believes that for many of us, it is not easy to make time, spend money, or get help to cover all of our demands while taking a much-needed time out to focus on our life's work. It took her years to make a move and ask for the things she needed to have alignment and inner peace. The lesson she learned during this time is that if you do not make the time, no one else will make it for you. You are the only one that can make that investment for yourself. Tune into today's episode as she explores key findings and helps us resolve. Is it okay for asking for alone time? And now here's JJ. Welcome, JJ. Hello, hello. How are you? I am so excited to finally connect with you. Mm, me too, me too. This is going to be really fun. It's going to be great. So the topic for this month will be spiritual awareness. And I thought you would be perfect given your background and your current book. So maybe you can share a little bit about both. Yeah, I'd love to. So I'll just say that I really wasn't comfortable with the word spiritual for a very long time. So I really sort of anchor my work under energy or frequency of how I was feeling any particular moment, but it really were, was the tools and the techniques that I use to help me understand where I was in my life and how to elevate my energy to sort of catapult in the direction I desired. And slowly over time, I got more comfortable with the word spiritual, because for me, spiritual is really about connecting with something bigger than myself, an energy that's more pure, that's more enlightened, and that has a frequency that really elevates all of us. And so now I freely use the word spiritual, but I really did take quite some time to get around that then with that word. And there are so many connotations around that. Even for myself, if I'm trying to encourage someone to try a technique, I'll say, well, it's okay to be mindful because we all have a mind. Yeah. And that was another thing too. I tried to, I tried to go to mindfulness classes for at least, it took me two or three times before I really sat down and gave myself permission to be in the John kabat classes to really understand what mindfulness is. I really thought in so many situations, it was to remove every thought from your mind. But what I learned over my training is it is to be aware of thoughts, but not attach anything to them. And so they're like passing cars, as you state so often, you know, the thoughts will come and go without attaching to them. And so, you know, these really were some of the underpinnings of my shift out of corporate America into the work that I do now to really raise the frequency of myself and others. And one of the things I remember from your book um, that you express that I, I too felt is that you can achieve a certain level and that carrot that dangles in front of you thinking, if I take that next step, the next step, but you may not necessarily be fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah, so I too spent a long time in corporate America in the technology field, much of which in Silicon Valley too. And I enjoyed my work and I was constantly striving, but I had an inner whisper 
that became undeniable. It was a whisper that was pushing me in a direction different than where I sat every day in corporate America. It really was encouraging me to seek off the side of my desk other ways of living, ways to get more in touch with the land and the moon and the stars. And it was hard because I had young children, but I really tried to just start reading and listening to videos at the time, you know, some recordings, eventually podcast. But I feel like if you are being called to something bigger, eventually it will become undeniable. And your awareness as it grew, I I imagine you were then called to write the book. Maybe you could share um, the context and under which it came to fruition. Thank you. Yeah. So Seeking is my third book. My first two books are very focused on women in business and aligning to the right work, board seats, you know, leadership positions, you know, entrepreneurship. But Seeking is very different. Seeking is my journey over the last five years of really aligning to more self-worth, sidestepping self-doubt, increasing my energy, and creating a path to tap into the wisdom I came with. And sometimes that wisdom is so suppressed because of, I would say, culture or training or wanting to survive in the survival mode, at least for some of us women in corporations, is that we suppress that knowing. And I believe yeah. it has a, almost like a roadmap to increasing awareness. Yes, it is definitely a roadmap because, and even the community where I bring so many of these women together, I call it together we seek because I'm not done seeking. I definitely don't have all the answers, but I'm bringing the knowledge that I have gathered along the way. And my human design is a three, five. So I'm very much a trial and error. And once I figure out the things I like, then I like to share them. And so my books are really guides to help you dig into your stories, understand your ego, understand the relationships you've chosen and the work you align to. And that has been over a five-year journey for me. And I'm not sure I was completely ready to share it yet, but like many things, like if the universe wants you to do something, it really sort of lays it out in a way to make it easy or sort of pushes you along. Sounds like you're in a state of flow right now. Luckily, I am. Because when I was in corporate America, even though I loved the technology, loved it. And I loved the work, too. I just felt out of flux. I did not feel aligned to my best self. I created a woman's group that really helped me sort of get more alignment in many times and ways. Because I had young children and I was trying to juggle a global job. and But even with all of that, I still, my whispers were so loud and my, I was so unsettled and I didn't know why. And it just didn't seem like anything really kind of fulfilled me. And that hole or gap sort of kept getting larger and larger. And it came to a point where I just could not do it anymore. And I didn't really understand why. And I beat myself up for a long time of why I couldn't just stick it out. And. The concept of even sticking it out is often like that ingrained, you know, even the words have that vibration that you need to be in that space, you need to prove yourself. However, when you use the word alignment, it really resonates because it sounds like you're truly awakening to your purpose, your higher purpose. Yeah, it wasn't until after I stepped away for a few years that I sort of understood sort of why I felt so misaligned. I mean, I stepped away in 2014. I wrote my second book in 16. I was doing a lot of women's conferences in corporations. But then I noticed, you know, the more events that I did and the more I would talk about self-worth and self-doubt and self-efficacy and, you know, aligning to your best self, I would watch the women watch me in a way that I could tell they could relate. And I started to sort of see them and them sitting next to themselves. Like there was a misalignment of their energy and their bodies. 
And I started some retreats in 2018, not really ever knowing how to create a retreat. In fact, I have a funny story in the book, Seeking, about how I sat on the idea for three years, three years, because I was like, well, who am I to create this? I've never done this. I've never even gone to retreat. What the heck am I doing? And I happened to talk to a spiritual guide by the name of Dora, and she told me the most amazing advice. She said, JJ, build what you want to go to. How freeing is that? Like, I was like, build what I want to go to. And when I said it back to her, she said, yes. So in case nobody comes, you have a day for yourself. And just the relief of not having it totally figured out and not creating something to meet the needs of so many others that I really, if I was going to do this and I've continued with that advice, I've been doing retreats for all several years now is I build an agenda I want to go to. And I am right in the front row with you because I want to learn how to shift my energy or do Jaguar dancing or manifest, you know, the energy to help me open the next level of the work here I have on earth. I want to be right beside you. And that's how I create my gatherings. And that's truly the path to inner peace. Cause you talk about that in your book. And one of the catalysts was the desire for finding that or connecting to that peace. I find that really cool that you mentioned that, um, you wanted to build something that you'd want to be in because that was also one of my, uh, I would say, um, goals when I started building my business is, you know, coming from the user experience world, everyone's like, well, you have to figure out their persona and the demographic and know exactly where they're coming from. Like, well, I think maybe I just want to build what I feel I'd want to be a part of. Yeah. Like be your own ICA, right? I agree. And I've even done many courses, you know, since I've left corporate America and I'm like the ICA or my user is easy. It's me. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, just within, before we hit record, you and I were connecting over the fact that just even human design is something that we both are interested in. Yeah. What I'm finding, and you know, I guess we all do, if we're in corporate America, you've done a 360 or a Myers-Briggs or, you know, some type of strength finders or, you know, there's a slew of other tools. Most of them are pretty masculine in nature. And so is the workforce. And so it's not uncommon that women are working, feeling like they're not really showing up with all their toolkit. I feel like the energy of corporate America is so masculine that many of us have to check our knowing at the door and then go in to play the game every day or show up at work with only half of our knowing, yet we put the pressure to show up at 120%. And so many of us feel completely depleted, disconnected, and we lose our ability to have joy because we are feel so displaced. And I think the tools like human design, or I do birth charts, which I love, or other tools like numerology or Enneagrams are more of a feminine energy that rounds out some of the information that we might already know about ourselves to give us a clear indication of the work we are here to do on earth. Absolutely. Borrowing from those elements and understanding that that leans into the, our energy, the feminine energy, which brings us further into alignment. One of the things that I had often felt a disconnect over while in corporations is the fact that we were, I was often feeling as a woman that you're put into a box, like, okay, these are your skills. This is what you do. Here's the label. Now don't leave this box. But what if there's more to me? Just like JJ, yeah. there's more to you. Yes. And I suggest so many people like, I'm not suggesting an upheaval or you go in tomorrow and say, I quit. I'm a huge believer of trying things off the side of your desk. I started my women's group in 2008. I wrote my first book in 2011. I started speaking to women's groups, you know, until 2014 when I could find a revenue stream. Once I had identified my revenue stream, then I went out on my own and wrote my next book. And so when you think about it, I was working from 2008 to 2014 before I even left my corporate job. But the things I was doing off the side of my desk, which you will now see on the cover of my third book, Seeking, I have all these books and things I was doing off the side of my desk, was exactly what I needed to fill my soul and align with energy that I could not get necessarily from my day job, but made me better at my day job and in my life. And I imagine 
that principle can be even taken into small bits. Just imagine if each of us could integrate some of these techniques into our daily practice. It could be off to the side of the desk. Imagine taking a five minute break and meditating. Right. I mean, and I talk about that so often. I say, you know, you can do it right at your desk. And I have a couple meditations right in the book that I do. I mean, one of the easiest things I do at my desk is tap my toes. Because once I tap my toes, like I feel that I'm in my seat, I can feel my arms, my shoulders, and even my head. And I can easily just open up the top of my head to get light from above or really settle my legs into the ground and feel the vines from Mother Earth coming up through my legs. And I can do this in seconds. And in doing that, I just know one, I'm not alone. And two, I have so much more energy and power at my fingertips than I have if I try to do it alone. Grounding is just so powerful. I take it to the next level in the more recent days because I read that the melatonin, that your the sun rays provide melatonin and it can help with your sleep patterns. So I actually go barefoot in the backyard in the grass with my lemon tea and just soak it in. But I love the fact that you said you would just just tap your to um, toes and getting grounded like that. We need that often going, I can tell you when I worked in corporations, wake up early, make sure my son is fed, hop in the car and drive an hour in the freeway and it's go, go, go. Yeah, it's just not the lifestyle for everybody. And I feel like if you're listening to this and are thinking, you know, I feel so unsettled or I'm not aligned or I just don't really like where I am in my life, all of those are no accident. It's really forcing you to wake up and realize that you have more to do on the planet and what you're doing is only a sliver of what is possible and where you can sort of plug yourself into a higher energy or frequency. Your book has a checklist, I recall. I was trying to just look for it real quick. But I love the fact that you list some of these key points. Like, are you feeling this? Are these the type of thoughts that are coming through you? That's an indicator of a shift that needs to occur. But sometimes without those prompts, we don't get to the point of action and awareness to action. Yeah. And oftentimes when we're not feeling good and we're not at our best self, we attract similar energy. And so then we might be around a bunch of people that talk and say and experience life the way we do. I sometimes call that, um, well, I'll just say that when I was in that type of energy, looking back now, I was clearly in a mud puddle. I mean, I was at the lowest point of my energy and I was swimming with people that I was attracting at that time, which were also very low energy people low frequency. And I say frequency, I think like a radio station, you know, like FM modulation, right? So you have a frequency modulation is what FM radio stands for. So you could be at a 90.9, a 97.3, a 102.5 is 97.7. You know, it doesn't matter what the number is, but the idea is where are you on the spectrum? Because it takes a lot of energy to drop from one frequency to the other. And if you are surrounding yourself around people that are at 90.9, it's going to be really hard for you to get to 98.5. It's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of alone time, a lot of reading, a lot of shifting what you watch and what you say to yourself and others. And I feel like if you're in the space right now where you're not really at your fullest potential, the first thing you should check in is in your energy. What is my energy like? Who am I attracting? What am I spending my time doing? Because it's your energy is all you really have. And it's really the most important thing you can manage. Energy awareness has become one of my foremost favorite topics. I started Qigong a year ago and really tune in into not only the physical movements, the thoughts, the vibrations that are around it, but now reflecting back as you were expressing to yeah. that. I may have been in I recall one point saying something to one of my yoga teachers and he said well you're ref they're, you're reflecting what's going on on the inside and at first I took that as an offensive thing like well I, I, I don't I'm not one of them <laughs> but maybe I had become one of them yeah it's hard to it, and it takes mindfulness right I mean that is like the 101 if you're not in the present moment and what you can really only do with mindfulness if you're not in the present moment, you have no idea how you're showing up. Yeah. 
Now, you touched upon something that we've discussed in the past, seeking alone time. I think that's a key point to the path of awareness. Maybe you can share a little bit more with especially women who often are afraid to seek alone time. Well, that's a great point, right? So what, how much time do you spend alone? And are you afraid to be alone? Because if you're afraid to be alone, oftentimes it's because you're afraid of just what is going to happen with you and yourself. And that's okay. That's okay. Like wherever you are in the process of really getting to a deeper awareness of who you are, what you say to yourself, what you align to and how you show up in the world is really kind of starts with being by yourself. So Hey, sweet souls, if you are seeking to start 2023 strong, then you are in for a treat. In 2023, I'll be hosting regular free mindfulness workshops starting in February 2023, aimed at professional working women or mompreneurs. With each workshop, by signing up, you receive free guides that will support you not only in terms of your daily routine, rituals, but also to help you attract abundance and manifest the dreams that you desire. Did you know that taking your manifestations to the next level is about integration of tools and mindfulness modalities that help you cultivate the skills to recognize what your current abundance mindset is and build your ability to receive? You can learn practical skills combined with powerful mindfulness tools to overcome your fears, eliminate anxiety, and take control of your life. Click on the link at the bottom of the show notes to get on the early sign up list. Namaste. If you are someone that's like, I can't even imagine being by myself. Like you need to start asking yourself or journaling. Like, why is that? What am I afraid of? I think some people that fear being alone are fear of not being loved or accepted. Or what if they hurt somebody's feelings or go, you know, leave somebody stranded, whatever it may be. It honestly doesn't matter, but you do need to find out what that is for yourself. For me, Solo trips are one of my favorite things. And it, I had to work up to solo trips. I used to just start going, you know, for a walk by myself. And then I'd have lunch by myself. Then I go to a movie by myself. Then I went to dinner by myself, which is really a big deal because it makes people incredibly uncomfortable in a restaurant if you're eating by yourself as a woman. <laughs> so it's like you kind of build up to spending time by yourself, which ultimately got me to my solo trip to Sedona for my 40th birthday. And that was really where I gained more insight of why I was feeling so unsettled. It sort of allowed me to sort of open my book of, okay, why am I here? Why am I so unsettled? And how do I start to really create activities that give me more insight of my life's work? And those insights are what, some of the things that come out in seeking the different points and different ch chapters. Maybe you could share like one or two just to give an idea and I'll, obviously, I'll share the book in the show notes as well. Well, that's great. So um, a couple, I mean, I have so many favorite chapters, but, you know, a couple of things that I love uh, in the book is it goes, it has every chapter has some kind of story uh, that give you an example of like how it has shown up for me. And then there's a series of questions in every chapter of how it could have shown up for you or what does this what does this tip off for you? Or what does this bring forward? And then I have a key finding, like a summary of kind of what to take away. But a couple of things is I think many of us see glimpses of our life's work at an early age. So that's one thing. The other thing is many of us have guides, people that guide us to go right when maybe we were going to go left. It could be a guidance counselor, a neighbor, someone you work with, a family member, a teacher. So it's really interesting to kind of see over your lifetime who's been your guides and I put very specific examples in there so you know exactly what we're talking about. And then for many of us, like the relationship with we, what we have with our mother is instrumental and often comes with many, many life lessons. And so I have a couple chapters on mothers and relationships. And then one of my favorite lessons that I've learned is the frequency I've given money. And how the energy that I've given money has sometimes altered my decisions because I've given it the wrong energy. And so understanding how you view money and how you view it specifically to the things that you want to do. And the topic of uh, mothers, that alone is just speaks volumes for me. I lost my mom a few years ago and very unexpectedly. And that sort of became the catalyst of 
why I'm on this path. Because from the pain came this desire to do more with my life. Our mothers are absolutely instrumental to us. And there's no accident. You picked your mother and your father, uh, and they often bring us our biggest life lessons. Absolutely. I, or one of our biggest life lessons, I should say. One of our biggest life lessons. Because, and for those of you that are with your children that are like, oh, my, like my friend always says, I cannot believe my kids. You know, I have so many. And she has like six kids. And she's like, I don't know. I'm never giving them equal justice or this or that. And I said, remember, your children have chosen you and their siblings. Yeah. Like there's no accident, like the makeup of families and why it happens. And even though some of them are just tragic stories, there is a lesson buried within. Yes. Um, all relationships, whether they are difficult or very beautiful and uplifting, have these deep lessons. I've often struggled with one particular family member. And when I'm in the right spiritual headspace, I'm always like, oh, of course that's happening. <laughs> There's the lesson. Yeah. And it is, I, I think I've seen, especially coming into the holiday season, right? It's like, I have all this spiritual training, which basically goes out the window when I spend time with my family. <laughs> oh my God. It's, I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah. I like really totally lose it. But I just, I feel like the work that we're in now is we get so many like clues and alignments and I mean I get it I don't know about you but I get so many numbers like I'll walk by the clock and it's like one 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 or one one two two or two 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 it's crazy I don't look at the clock that often so the fact that I get so many numbers that come my way on a regular basis what in my journal every morning I pause to think about synchronicity of what is happening at that time and space in my life and sometimes it's not obvious so I don't have anything to write about but some days I'll be like, even something simple, like you're mentioning numbers, there'll be weeks and days where literally the number keeps popping up. We recently got a new car. I really had wanted it. The first thing that happened when we sat in the car to take it home is my favorite song was just happened to be on and it was one, 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 one. Yeah. It's like, we're helping you out. We're seeing you hope you enjoy this gift from us. Yes. Yes. And then going back to what you mentioned about mentors, you may not have used that word, but people that are in our life, I've often tuned into that because while on one hand, you may, at least in my case, not have an explicitly picked out mentor saying, you're my guide, you're my mentor, but innately, I'm often seeking that guidance. And through serendipity, through synchronicity, there'll be the right people at the right time in your life helping you oh yeah like a lot of people think of like angels or a higher being like something they can't see but these energies work through other people too and so you know they might i mean even tomorrow i'm going to be out of town and i'm going to be doing this video um conference call and i need to use a shared space and this woman i only wanted to pay a certain amount of money for this one and it was like double and i just like sat there for a second and she's like oh you know what i'll just give it to you for the one hour like, I, I didn't even ask. I was just sitting there, but I feel like things happen. You, like what energy you put out, you often get back and sometimes even better, like a little jackpot. And and things, people will say things to me when I'm passing them and they don't even know why they're saying it sometimes. And and I do the same to others. I'll be like, say something in a call or whatever. I, it wasn't really my thought, but I feel like I needed to say it. And I feel like messages come through us and through others. And so being present is so important because you'll miss so many signs or spiritual gifts that come your way if you're busy thinking about where you've been or planning on where you're going. Exactly, because then you're no longer present in the moment. But I believe by being more present and taking these techniques into your daily practice as a lifestyle, it's like you're churning that energy and then you're elevating your vibration so that you are receptive to, like you said, not only through other human beings, it could be an animal, it could be that feather you were describing in your book. Yeah, I find feathers all the time in the most randomest places, like crazy places I find feathers, feathers. And I feel like it's just 
a way to say like, I got you or you're on the right path or good work or it's really amazing. It's so amazing. And even in my office, like the birds that come to my window and just like when I go to the grocery store, I feel like all my friends are at the grocery store, which I never did when I was in corporate because I was rushing, 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 rushing. But I feel like I go to the grocery store, which is not my favorite thing to do, but like there's beams of light in all these people that are there that I feel like are just around me to be pleasant and lovely and share so much positive energy and it makes me feel so good. And I spend time talking to them. And I just feel like we're all of these bright souls around all of us. And speaking of bright souls, before we hit record, you mentioned your um, group together. We seek, maybe you could share more about that. And for those who may not be familiar, maybe describe what is a light worker? Yes, I'd be thrilled to. So when I started seeking, I feel like I've been seeking my whole life, but really over the last six to seven years, I would ask people like one of the first spiritual women that I worked with was Dora. And I actually got her, she's in California, she was in California. Now she's overseas, but she came through an acupuncturist that came through my husband's grandmother. So I feel like it was like a little teeny seeds where I would go around and ask people, who do they use for this? Who do they use for that? Do you know an iridologist? Do you know, um, you know, a face reader, a palm reader, an astrologer? Like I was just finding any type of energy or insight that I could use to help me because I felt so lost in my own life, which seems so silly now because I feel so illuminated, but it took a lot of time and a lot of money to go and do and meet with all these people because I had to travel often and I talked to people online and in person. And so I created a community together we seek to bring together some of my favorite light workers. And I interview all different types of practitioners because I'm really just looking to see what's out there. And you know, a couple of weeks ago I talked to Natalie and she's an astro astrocartography where she aligns your birth chart to the map of the world. And it kind of highlights the areas in the planet that really align to your soul. So I have all different conversations, but the whole goal is to just share the different tools, techniques, and practices out there so that anybody can say, you know, what is this? What is that? Let me check it out. And um, it's just been so rewarding because I feel like we're shifting from the fifth sun to the sixth sun. So we're moving much more into a feminine energy and about healing the planet. And many of us are going to need new levels of insight, new relationships, and new awareness of not only who we are, but how to show up on the planet in a new way. And as, and as light workers, I believe that we each have a responsibility to uplift and serve others. And sometimes that serving others could be something as simple as making sure their energy is expanding, using the right approach a smile at some the smiling of yeah. the and, and sense their energy as opposed to contracting being critical or condemning or whatever it means to take away that person's energy but we're here to uplift illuminate yeah so much so and i should just carry on to say that i didn't fully answer your question so the way i view us as humans is that we all we all, we all know our body, right? So I really see our body as a vessel that comes with our ego. And that's the energy that's protecting us and helping us each day, but in a way that is sometimes more based on fear and, you know, worry and anxiety. But if you really kind of think about your body at the top of the head, my head often opens up a lot to like plug into the higher light. And when I was doing that one day, I sort of just had this vision that all of us, there's a pool of light. And all of us are teardrops of that light. That teardrop comes into our body and turns on our eyes and turns on our body. And if you look at little children, you should just look in their eyes, how bright they are, how happy they are most of the time. And I think our whole goal down here is for that light to shine brighter than the ego or the voice in our head. And so some of us have figured out how to master that light and energy and those people use different tools, techniques, and strategies to illuminate their light. And that's what I call light workers. And they're often down here to help other people illuminate their light. And they may not even be conscient, conscientious of it, but they may be 
doing the work and practicing it. And like you were saying, different techniques. Someone may be coming at it from human design or someone else might be coming at it with say a mantra and something, I don't know, from ancient Hindu principles. Mm, it's so true. And they could be anywhere. They could be the person working at the grocery store. Like I feel like I have there. They could be somebody at, you know, a favorite restaurant. It could be somebody in your neighbor. You just have no idea, but you will, I guess, if you start to pay attention there, they illuminate, you can see the light. It like seeps out of them in ways that is undeniable. They shine in so many situations and to your point, they're doing the work. They're understanding who they are. They're getting to know more about their life's work. And sometimes they're just there to illuminate a party or a gathering or a meeting. And I think all of us can be them. We just have to prioritize what we pay attention to, what we talk about, what we watch, and what we say. And where our attention goes, energy flows. This really just ties back to the fact that you've tuned into the idea that we're all energy and how do you I, I don't want to say the word control but how do you manage that energy so that it's uplifting not only your different bodies your relationships with other bodies but also as an ecosystem how do we uplift one another completely completely and I keep a mantra in my calendar I'm going to open it up for you I keep a mantra in my calendar every day when I start on my computer every day, I read this to myself. I am a high vibrational soul committed to up-leveling my frequency and sharing it with integrity. I'm going to have to use that one day. <laughs> I love it. I, I have a series of mantras. One of them often is, um, I, I'm vibrant energy. I am vibrant energy. And then I need to take action. Well, how can I maintain this energy? Well, then do all this work. Yeah, it's really, I mean, I think just you and I and all the other women that are on this path with us, some are farther ahead, some are, but wherever you are is exactly where you're meant to be. And if you're listening to us in our conversation today, it is not an accident. It's not an accident. It's an energy or frequency that you can easily tap into, be part of by just deciding to be so. That is wonderful. Any any overarching words of wisdom for women who are thinking what is spiritual awareness and how what are like three practical ways I can integrate this into my already difficult life because maybe someone's coming at it from a very different place than you and I are at now 10 15 years into this journey mm, that's so true I mean spiritual awareness for me if those words scare you it's just really believing that your energy with that sits within your body is tethered to a much brighter light and that you can access that light so many different ways at any time. You just have to choose to do so. And a couple of ways you can do that is just being present, meaning you can fail your hands on your desk and your feet on the floor. And you're just doing just a check-in of your body section by section. Another way you could do that is to say a mantra or pick a mantra. Another way is to maybe, you know, listen to something, one of your recordings on YouTube, listening to a podcast, doing anything that's going to raise your energy or frequency and not giving in to the easy ways of letting people take your energy. Like I have almost completely stopped watching TV. Like I'll watch a couple shows here and there, but they are nothing that's going to make me feel fearful, give me anxiety, worry, or disgust me or make me crazy or fearful. Like, I just won't do it. Like I will not do it. I, and my husband's always like, let's watch this. I'm like, no, too much negative energy. I can't live like that. So I think just being, paying attention to what you focus on could be the easiest way to start. It is, and especially with media often, um, putting thoughts into our head that can shift our energy vibration, just being cognizant of that. Really yes. Very wonderful. Okay. So true. Thank you. Jane. So true. I can't wait for people to read your book and pick up all the insights. And even if it's one, I would say that seeking that effort you make 
it could be the catalyst for a big change in your life. Yes. I mean, seeking for me is a game changer. I mean, it has 74 key findings to raise your energy, sidestep your self-doubt and align with your life's work. And as an avid self-help reader, uh, I did not put anything in there that I already knew about. So I really spent years working on these findings to help enlighten not only myself, because I read it often, uh, but the people who read it to really think things are possible. And I've already gotten so many great messages from people that have said, oh my gosh, because of you, I've taken that off my schedule or because of you, I'm starting that certification or because of you, I'm going on that trip. And I can't think of a bigger compliment that chapters would encourage women to take action. Absolutely. I And I, I loved so many of those insights and seeking tips because I felt like even if I've already done them, even if that checklist that you have in the beginning, there's a checklist in the beginning for those who will look at the book of almost like an introspection of where am I at? And some of those questions and answers would have been different for me 10 years ago versus now. But it also tells me that the Delta is indicating that the shift has started. So exciting. And, and we wouldn't be together if our frequencies were not similar. That's the beautiful thing. Absolutely. Well, I love your energy. And I say that often to some of my favorite guests. And it's true. They're just like, you can love somebody else's energy. I love it. I love it. I thank you. And thank you for everyone for taking the time to listen. And I look forward to seeing you and meeting you in person. Me too. And I would love to have you back for a future category for the podcast as well. Mm, I'd be honored. Thank you. You're most welcome. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thanks again for tuning in. Check out the links in the description and please subscribe, follow, and share and continue to practice Omni Mindfulness.